striking changes are taking place all over our planet. Icebergs and glaciers are melting at an unprecedented pace. Sea levels are rising. Storm surges and high waves are causing more serious damage. Coral reefs are disappearing, and with them, sea creatures' natural cradle. Experts say what's driving these changes is global warming. Greenhouse gases generated by human activity play a major role in the problem. The Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change, or IPCC, compiled the latest findings in its fifth assessment report. It features essays by 800 scientists, drawing on nearly 10,000 research papers. They discuss global warming from the past into the future and propose measures to combat it. The report predicts that if carbon dioxide levels keep increasing, the Earth's average temperature will rise by up to 4.8 degrees Celsius by the end of the century. Each one of us faces a major decision. Do nothing or make the changes needed to achieve a low carbon future. COP21, held in Paris, marked a turning point in the fight against climate change. Countries from around the world adopted the landmark Paris Agreement. They agreed to hold global temperature increases to well below 2 degrees Celsius and to make efforts to limit the increase to 1.5 degrees. To that end, they'll aim to achieve net zero greenhouse gas emissions in the second half of this century. They're required to submit regular reports to the UN on how they plan to reduce emissions, along with reduction targets. And they adopted a global review and verification mechanism. I think this is a historic textbook. Having a legally binding universal climate uh, agreement is marvelous. I'm extremely satisfied, but mainly because we have raised the expectation of future generations. The Paris Agreement went into force in November 2016. It was ratified by Japan along with major greenhouse gas emitters. It opens the door to a future of sustainable growth with zero carbon emissions. Initiatives are already taking root around Japan. An island off western Nagasaki Prefecture was the testing ground for a floating offshore wind turbine. Project members used excess electricity to produce hydrogen for the nation's first fuel cell powered boat. Through initiatives like these, Japan is working to power its economy on carbon-free energy. In Higashiomi City, Shiga Prefecture, the whole community is taking action. What's important is sustainability. People need to be firmly rooted in their community. It's important to love our town to want to have a family and raise children here. We want more people to feel this way. To enrich their town's future, the residents are promoting consumption of locally grown food. Their power is also locally harvested. Residents and local businesses have built six solar power stations.
even with measures like these, higher temperatures are unavoidable in the near future. Everyone must quickly adapt to the changes. The Japanese government has compiled a national plan for adaptation to the impacts of climate change. From natural disasters and agriculture to ecosystems and health, it proposes strategies for a broad range of issues. Nagano is a major farming prefecture. But apples there aren't ripening as well as they used to because of climate change. According to one forecast, continued global warming would reduce Nagano's apple growing regions by 40%. The public and private sectors are collaborating to develop new types of apples that are better adapted to a warmer environment. Shiga Prefecture, home to Japan's largest lake, is preparing for extreme weather. They have created a hazard map in case of floods. Authorities are widening rivers to better handle heavy rains. And building homes that can keep people safe from floodwaters. People young and old participate in disaster prevention drills to keep the memories of past disasters alive. They're taking a multi-pronged approach to guard against climate change. A push is underway to bring greenery back to Japan's capital, Tokyo, to ease the scorching summer heat. Around buildings and on rooftops, the number of plants and trees is increasing. Wide open spaces are being created along roads so cooling winds can flow more easily. Ahead of the 2020 Olympics, authorities are planning to use technology and nature to promote a sustainable, low-carbon metropolis. Developing countries are the most vulnerable to the impacts of global warming. But they lack the technical and financial resources to take necessary action. Japan and other industrialized countries are stepping in to help them achieve low carbon growth. This was one of the central issues at COP21 in Paris. At the conference, Japan announced an increase in financial assistance to developing countries. Japan is already engaged in a variety of projects in the South Pacific, Southeast Asia, and countries such as Mongolia. Lights from our cities and homes can be seen far from space. They're mainly powered by fossil fuels, and so are our economies. Our daily activities increase the concentration of greenhouse gases in the atmosphere and accelerate global warming. We hold one important key to achieving a low carbon future. A nationwide initiative launched by the Japanese government calls on people to make wise choices to help limit global warming. Cool choice. It's up to all of us to make conscious choices and help cut back on energy consumption. The most important thing is the consumption pattern of each and every individual. That means the choices we make when buying and the things we value. Each selection we make will tell businesses and investors what we're looking for. 
When we think about what to buy, it's important to choose products that are made with little energy and release no carbon dioxide. This is our chance to make a fresh start. We can introduce innovative technologies and shift to new types of energy. This will create new opportunities for economic growth and employment. It will contribute to a more sustainable and greener world economy. And it will open up more possibilities for the future.